Okay, this is going to be the Algebra 2 uh, Quarter 1 sample test. This will help you prepare for the uh, Quarter 1 test. I'm going to try to get through this in two videos. Hopefully, I don't have to go to three. Okay, these first two are, uh, first one is graphing. That is a quadratic, which is shaped like a U. Okay, my uh, anchor point there is going to be negative 2, negative 3. So that's 1, 2, 1, 2, and 3. Then what I got to think of, well, what are my key points with that? Okay, well, that's 1, 1, 2, 4. Okay. Now, since I have the negative out, out front, I'm going to multiply them by a negative 1. So that means I'm going to go from my anchor point, 1 right, 1 down, okay, and 2 right, 1, 2, 3, and 4 down. And I'm going to mirror that on the other side. So 1 over 1 down, 2 over 4 down, okay, and it makes the U shape, okay, like that. All right, this is an absolute value problem. Now what I should do, or what I can do, is isolate by subtracting 4, okay? So that would give me 2x minus 3 equals negative x minus 1, okay? I can only subtract the 1, not that, two, because addition and subtraction is all like terms, okay? I'm going to divide by negative 1, okay? And what I got left with is negative 2x, positive 3 equals absolute value of x minus 1. If you want, you can plot the absolute value of x minus 1. The anchor point would be 0, 1, and then my, uh, my points for absolute value are 1, 1, 2, 2. So it would look like this, okay? All right? Now, what we mainly want is I want to find my intersection point, okay? So we go back to menu and graph, all right? Now, my equation is negative 2x plus 3. How I get to absolute value is option, num, and there's my ABS. Make sure whatever you want inside the absolute value is there, all right? All right, so I'm going to exit out of that, exit. I'm going to draw, okay, and I get that. Now, how I find the intersection is G solve intersect. My intersection is 1.3 comma 0.3, okay? So 1.3 comma 0.3, both of those repeating, okay? My answer is 1.3, okay? As far as the graph goes, I'm going to go 1.3, 0.3 up, which is right about there, okay? And then the uh, equation for that line, the y-intercept is 3, all right? So this is what I got for an equation, okay? You can use your calculator to find the various things. All right, y-intercept, enter. You can find out that 0, 3, um, all that good stuff, okay? Um, so that, that's how you do that problem. Moving down to number two, number three, okay? My anchor point for this is zero, one, zero over one up. For a square root, all right, what I'm looking for is for a square root, my basic points are one, one, four, two, okay? All right, since I have those two here, I'm gonna multiply those by two, okay? So from my anchor point, I'm going one right, two up, then one, two, three, Four, one, two, three, and four, and that's what my graph looks like. Okay, all right. Moving on to the next page. Okay. Yep. I know the numbers look a little off. But that's okay. All right. It's to show the what transformations are taking place. What I want to do is look at my anchor point. One, two, three. All right. So negative three. My anchor point's a negative three. One, two, three, and four. Okay. So what's happening? I shifted left. 3, I went shift up 4, I reflected over the x-axis, okay? Now, here's how you figure out this dilation. Normally my points are 1, 1, 2, 4. Well, let's look at where my points are now. 1 right, 1 down, okay? Alright, 2 right, 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, and 4. Okay, so there really was no vertical dilation of any type because these stayed the same. Okay, moving on to the next one. All right, what is the solution to this? Okay, if there's no graph, what you can do very simply is go into your calculator and graph it yourself. I'm going to graph x minus 3, so I'm doing option, num, absolute value. I'm doing x minus 3. Okay, x minus 3. I'm putting parentheses around that. I'm hitting execute. I'm hitting delete. Okay, oops. I'm hitting delete and I'm typing in negative 2x. I'm hitting enter. I'm hitting draw. Okay, and my intersection is going to be right there. So G solve intersect. 
negative 3, 6, okay? Now, my answer, though, is going to be x equals negative 3, okay? That is just the intersection. If they're asking for the solution, that's what I need, okay? Which set of values makes this equation true? Okay, once again, that's a calculator deal, all right? Exit, all right, I'm going to go in and uh, um, type in, all right, 3x, okay, plus 4. And on the other line, I'm going to type in 8. I'm going to draw it. My intersections are there. G solve intersect, negative 4, 8, and 1.38. So negative 4, 8, 1.3, repeating 8. My answers are x equals negative 4, x equals 1.3, repeating. That's what I want for a final answer. What is the solution set to this? Well, what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to subtract 4. That's absolute value of x minus, uh, x minus 8 is less than 4. So what I want to do, um, what I want to do there is, uh, is, is look at my, uh, go back to my graphs. I'm going to exit. All right. Uh, I'm going to delete that. Oh, whoops. I'm going to delete it. All right. Option, num, absolute value. All right. x minus 8. Okay. All right, and uh, four, I draw, all right, I can't see it. I have the option of moving over, that will help. I'm gonna find my intersections. That's gonna be G solve intersect. I got four, four, and I got 12, four, all right? So I've got uh, four, four, and 12, four. Now, if I'm making a number line there, all right, I'm here at four, I'm here at 12. The smaller number goes here, the bigger number goes here both open circles. I got to figure out the shading with this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pretend like that's y. And what we know about if I have a v, if the absolute value eats the v, uh, eats the y, that means I'm going to be shading up there. So that's in between. So this would be my answer, okay? So my answer is going to be between 4 and 12. Okay? 4 and 12. All right? All right, moving up to number four, write the absolute value inequality to represent the graph. Okay, that's a shading. Now, what I want to do is figure out how far those are apart. Negative four to eight is 12. And what I want to do is I want to divide that by two. That becomes my number. Okay, all right. I want to always divide by two. Then I'm moving six in. All right, one, two, three, four, five, and six. So moving six in puts me right here. Now, what that does is when it goes inside, all right, that's going to go in as opposite. All right? Now, i got to figure out the equation. All right? Since that's shaded inside, that would mean that it's like this, very similar to the last problem. And that would be this eating y, so that's going to eat 6. And I'm going to put a line underneath it because it's a filled-in circle. Okay? It says, what is the solution to this problem? What I would need to do is divide by negative 2. Okay? So I get uh, this. Now, I had to flip this around because I divided by a negative. Now, there should be a lot of uh, red flags going on here because I've got an absolute value and a negative number, okay? And what an absolute value can create is a positive or zero. And what you have to ask yourself, can a positive or zero ever be less than or equal to negative five? And it never can. So this answer is no solution, okay? So that's that problem, all right? Moving on to number six. <clears throat> graph the inverse. Well, what we know about inverse, if I take these points, which is 1 over 1, 2, 3 up, 2 over 1, 2, 3, 4 up, and then 3 over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 up, okay? And what I could do to find the inverse is turn those around. So I'm graphing 3, 1, 4, 2, 7, 3. 1, 2, 3, 1. 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, okay? Um, 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 1, 2, and 3. So what my inverse looks like is that. And you can use this starting point here to be your starting point there. Okay, so 1, 3 was my starting point. That's going to be my, my other one if I flip around the other side. Let me check the time on this. Okay, I'm pretty good. i got about five minutes left on, uh, on this time. Let's go ahead to the next page, okay? All right, find the inverse. If that, find the inverse. F of x is a fancy symbol for y. So I'm going to, first step is I'm going to switch x and y. Okay, now, what I need to do is get everything away from y. So I'm going to get this away and then the 3. All right, 
right? So I got x minus 2 equals 3 square root of y. I'm going to divide by 3, okay? All right? So what I have here is I've got x over 3, okay? x over 3 or 1 third x minus 2 thirds equals the square root of y. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and square this, square the whole thing. So I got y equals, all right, 1 third x minus 2 thirds squared. And that would be an appropriate answer. Um, describe the domains and ranges of the inverse functions, uh, of inverse functions, give an example. So the idea there is if the domain were x such that x was greater than or equal to 2, okay, all right, and the range was such that y is greater than or equal to 3, okay, when you were to do the inverse, the inverse is just flipping around x and y. So the domain would be uh, x such that x is greater than or equal to 3. And the range would be y such that y is uh, greater than or equal to 2. Okay? So you end up just flipping those around. All right? Moving down to number 9. What is g, f of g of negative 4? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with f. Okay? I replaced x with the parentheses. I'm going to put in g. Now, since I have the negative 4 there, I can go ahead and store negative 4. Let me go back to the menu. Okay? I'm going to store negative 4 in for x. Okay? And I'm going to type this in just like I see it. x minus 1 squared all right, plus 2. And I get an answer of 27. Okay? So that, that's, that's pretty simple there. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and stop the video, and we're going to pick up on the, on the next slide.